Hi guys, welcome to Epistasis. So this is our last video on the genetic crosses. If you missed on the previous ones, make sure you find them. So epistasis, it's a form of genetic uh, interaction in which one gene uh, it's, uh, it interferes with the expression of a gene at the different local, so at the different location. And this arises when the allele of one gene affects or masks the expression of another in the phenotype. So it looks quite complicated, but it's not. So how are we going to do it? We're going to look at the epistasis using the equation that everyone is aware of. So we'll, we'll be looking at the hydrolysis of starch. I know it doesn't make sense yet, but it will do in a second. So uh, we will start with the starch. Starch is hydrolyzed to maltose by the enzyme amylase. And we will use a gene A, which codes for this amylase. Okay, so what's the further hydrolysis? Maltose is hydrolyzed by maltase to glucose. And let's imagine that maltase is called uh, by gene B. Okay, so let's have a quick look here. So if, uh, if the gene A, okay, here, we've got a capital, okay, dominant allele for the gene A, it's there, at least one of those, we will get maltose, okay? So then later on, to produce glucose, we need at least one capital B, one dominant allele in the genotype to, uh, to uh, break down further maltose to glucose and to produce maltase. So what, so what would happen if, if the dominant allele A it's not present. So imagine you've got a lowercase a. If you've got a lowercase a, okay, both of them in the geno, uh, in the genotype, so you've got recessive homozygous for a gene a, you're not having, you're not going to get maltose, okay, because your amylase it's not being produced. So another situation, imagine you have a dominant homozygous for a gene a, so we're producing amylase but you've got a recessive homozygous now for a gene B. So in other words, you're not going to produce maltose. So in this situation, even so you produce maltose, you do not have uh, maltase because the, uh, there is not dominant alleles for the uh, gene B. You're not going to get glucose. So you can do many options here. Let's summarize with a few genotypes. Uh, so let's say we've got a dominant homozygous for both characteristics. So gene A, gene B, both are producing now uh, amylase and maltase. So we're getting maltose, of course, and we're getting glucose. Uh, in, uh, in this situation here, let's spot a mistake. Okay. So where is the mistake? Are we getting... To get a malt, are we going to get a maltose? Yes, of course, we've got at least one of the dominant A's in here. But is that correct? No, it's not. You are not going to get glucose because you've got the uh, recessive alleles, okay, for gene B. So there is no glucose. So here, yep, okay. There is no glucose because of the recessive alleles for the gene B. Right, next situation. So we've got a, a recessive for A's. Okay, that's, that's correct. We're not going to get maltose, so not for maltose. And we've got the dominant for B. Right, and no for glucose. Is that right? Yes. It is now okay. So to sh to to make this uh, mistake on purpose here, I'm just trying to show you that if the gene A it's not expressed, what you're not going to get, you're not going to get maltose. So even so, okay, in this situation, you've got the gene B expressed. There won't be any glucose because you never at the first place got maltose. Okay, so you can play with this epistasis many times. 
you can make many different genotypes and have a look if you understand now the concept. So it's quite straightforward for, for this gene to, to work, okay, the gene that works on previously must be expressed. Okay, so that's the simple rule. So how you can see it in the past paper questions, mainly on the uh, on the equations like this with some enzymes, or you could uh, you could see it in the situation with the uh, with the mites. That's really common mis uh, common example here as well. So you could have a um, uh, mice, you could have different color for color coding, uh, for, uh, uh, coding for the expression, okay, of this color. So you've got here again the equation that will code for the four color, okay, and the uh, uh, gene B, that if the gene B here, okay, if it's uh, the recessive form, homozygous recessive for the gene B, you're going to get albino okay so other words you need to have at least one big b okay and then a it doesn't really matter because that will give you to uh, that will give you a gucci or that will give you the black mice okay and then you're doing a genetic cross exactly the same as in the dye hybrid cross so there is no, nothing new okay so imagine you're going to you're going to cross two Aguchi mice. At the end, you're going to uh, follow the rule exactly the same as for the dye hybrid cross, but you will be using the idea from the uh, from the epistasis information. So, for example, here all of those okay, uh, we, we've got those as the Aguchi because that's what was the uh, genotype of the. Uh, of the uh, parents, so we had at least one dominant A and at least one dominant B. So all of those with that genotype, or at least one of each, will code for Aguchi. So we've got the Aguchi here, okay, and we've got nine of those. And then we've got uh, four albino, okay. So this is uh, so this is our albino that will have a recessive. Uh, characteristic for the gene B. So let's locate those here. So we've got two Bs over there, over there, got it in there, and we've got it in there. So we know that if the gene B is not coding for this enzyme, okay, uh, if it's uh, recessive, all of those mice, never mind what the A will be like, will be albino. And then finally, we've got three. Uh, three black mice, so, which we can see here. So, according to our map, to uh, to produce black mice, we need homo recessive for the gene A, and uh, we need at least one of the big uh, Bs because that's what codes for melanin for the pigment. And how many of those we've got here? One, two, and three. And does that make sense? Yes, our A's are. Uh, recessive as per, uh, per our equation and yes at least we've got one big B okay dominant allele coding for the melanin to get a pigment right so that's everything for the epistasis see you later